The airplane has been around for over a century now. Unless you're an astronaut, flying in an airplane is probably the highest you've ever been. To get a good idea for just how high we really are, we need to understand the layers of the atmosphere. The average cruising altitude of a commercial airline is between 30,000 and 40,000 feet in the air. That's at the very top of the first layer, the troposphere. This goes from the surface to about 7 miles high. Most of the clouds and weather happen in this layer. Mount Everest comes to about 5.5 miles high. The next layer up is the stratosphere. This layer goes up to about 31 miles. Commercial airplanes can still fly up towards the bottom, and military planes can go a bit higher. Right here is the ozone layer, which protects us from radiation from the sun. In this layer you'll also find weather balloons. The world's highest skydive took place in 2014 at about 26 miles high. Next we have the mesosphere. This layer goes up to about 50 miles. The air is thin up here. However, this is where there's finally enough air that meteors start to burn up. Airplanes and weather balloons can't go this high, but rockets won't stay in this layer for long as they blast into orbit. The thermosphere goes up to about 440 miles. At about 62 miles is where most consider the start of outer space. This is called the Kármán line. There's still air up here, but it's so thin that sometimes we still forget there's an atmosphere. The northern lights happen here, and the International Space Station orbits about here. The highest layer is the exosphere. This is the layer that merges with the vacuum of space. There are so few air molecules up here that they will rarely collide with each other. Many satellites orbit here, so the air molecules won't slow them down as much. It's hard to say how far it really goes. Most scientists agree that it's about 6,200 miles. And while we're at it, the moon is located all the way out here. <laughs>